Welcome to this series of videos. Now we have Kenya with us. Kenya, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what is your project and your video about. Hi, I'm Kenya Oyervides and I graduated as a mechanical engineer in the spring 2020 semester and I will continue studying for my master's. I was doing undergraduate research on the hydrophilic polymer for encapsulation of hydrophobic materials, which could help in the advancement of medical applications. My video is about the fundamentals of solution concentrations. Very good. It was a very interesting video, and I think it's a video that helps everybody in the team because mostly everybody prefers solutions to develop their nanofibers. So I hope it serves all of you and you can learn from it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Enjoy this video. Today, I will be talking about what a solution is and how to determine different solution concentrations. The mixing of components is a routine procedure that is performed in all areas of material production. Some examples of mixtures are alloys, medication, cosmetics, cleaning products, food products, paints, and so many others. Therefore, at a lab scale, it's a commonly used procedure. The units used to describe the proportion between components are also really important because it's an essential tool that allows us to perform calculations and communicate important details about the mix in a standard language. Let's start with the basics. A solution is a homogeneous mixture produced by the integration of two or more components. These components are generally described as a solute and solvent. A solute is a substance dissolved in a solvent. Common household solutes would be sugar and table salt. In our nano labs, the most common polymers for fiber production used are PEO, PVA, and PVDF. In a solution preparation, the polymer would be the solute. A solvent is a substance that can dissolve another substance. In the case of polymers, the more common solvents would be water, acetone, DMF, THF, and chloroform. So what's the difference between a solution and a suspension? A solution is a homogeneous mixture meaning that the molecular structure of the solute and solvent rearrange to form a new mixture. The molecular size of a solution is less than 500 nanometers and it's a clear mixture. A suspension, on the other hand, is what happens when the solute's molecules are too big, which could be greater than 500 nanometers, and gravity causes them to sink after a while, creating clumps as seen here. Unlike a solution, suspensions have some color to them. What is a solution concentration? You can think of it as different ratios of solutes to solvents or solutes to solutions. There are different types of concentration units, but the more common are percent weight, weight per volume percentage, volume per volume percentage, and molar concentrations. Always remember to use your personal protection equipment in the lab. Let's start with an example for weight percent concentrations. Since this unit is widely used for the polymer solution preparation for fiber production. To solve these types of concentrations, you can multiply the percentage by the amount of solution to get the needed solute. The solvent would then be calculated by subtracting the solute from the solution. So, if you want to prepare fibers through a PEO solution, how many grams of PEO and solvent are required to prepare 20 grams of solution to a concentration of 10 weight percent? So what you would do is you would multiply those 20 grams by the 10% to give you 2 grams of solute. Then you would subtract the 20 and the 2 to give you 18 grams of solvent. Now let's say we're going to prepare a PVDF solution with a DMF solvent, which is toxic, using the same values as the previous example. Before starting, always check the safety data sheet for all chemicals that you use in the lab in order to know what is the appropriate way to manage them. We will need the same grams of solute and solvent. However, for safety reasons, instead of weighing the solvent, we will measure the volume equivalent to 18 grams in a fume hood. To do that, we need the solvent density, which can be found on the label of the solvent. The DMF density is 0.944 grams per milliliter. and we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. And if we rearrange that, we get that volume is equal to mass divided by density. If we plug in the mass that we have divided by the density of DMF, we know 
that the volume would be 19.067 milliliters. So 19.07 milliliters of solvent would be used and 2 grams of solute would be used and that is what would give us our solution at a 10% concentration. For a weight per volume percent example, the question asks, how many grams of solute would you need for 250 milliliters of solution that has a concentration of 12 grams per 100 milliliter? Weight per volume percent is equal to the mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution multiplied by 100. If we rearrange that, we get that the mass of the solute equals weight per volume percent divided by 100 multiplied by volume solution. So if we were to plug in that 12 divided by 100 and multiply it by 250 milliliters, we would get a total of 30 grams of solute. Volume per volume is commonly used when the components of the solution are in a liquid state. Let's look at how to do the preparation of a solution by the mix of DMF and acetone. If you want to prepare a 70 milliliter solution with 20 volume per volume percent concentration, how much volume in milliliters of DMF is needed? Well, volume per volume percent is equal to the volume of the solute divided by the volume of the solution, multiplied by 100. If we were to rearrange that, we would get that the volume of the solute is equal to volume per volume multiplied by the volume of the solution divided by 100. So if we plug in the 20% multiplied by the 70 milliliters divided by 100, we get a total of 14 milliliters of solute of acetone and 56 milliliters of solvent of DMF. Lastly, let's take a look at a molar concentration example. The problem asks, how many grams of sodium chloride would be needed to prepare 50 milliliters of solution to a concentration of three moles per liter? For this problem, we need to know the molecular weight, or formula weight, of sodium chloride, which is calculated by adding the atomic mass of each component. The atomic mass of sodium is 22.99 grams per mole, and for chloride, it's 35.45 grams per mole. And adding these together would give us a formula weight of 58.44 grams per mole. Now, we need to convert the 30 moles per liter into grams per milliliter. We can do this by multiplying the 30 moles per liter with the formula weight, which is 58.44 grams per mole, and convert the liters into milliliters. This would give us 0.175 grams per milliliters. To get the grams of solute, you would multiply 0.175 grams per milliliter by the 50 milliliter solution to give you 8.75 grams of solute. So why are solution concentrations even important? Different concentration levels can affect so many things about the fibers you produce, such as its morphology, diameter, and porosity. Take a look at how a change in concentration affected these polyethylene oxide fibers. In the 8% concentration, you can see small beads of polymer, which are considered defects, whereas in the 10% concentration, which are the results of the first concentration example we did, the fibers are continuously homogeneous. This goes to show that a small change of concentration can have a big effect on your fibers. It's going to take some trial and error to find out what concentration is best for the particular polymer solution that you're working with. Always remember to ask questions in the lab, for it is not the answer that enlightens, but the question.